and I'm done. So, all right. In this example, do you guys notice we have side, I'm sorry, angle side side. I'm not going to write it out because I know that's what you want me to do. But do you guys see how we have angle side side, right? We have angle side side. Does everybody see that? So therefore, we have the option of an ambiguous case. Our, our, to evaluate for the missing sides, we can either have no triangle, one triangle, or two triangles. Now, at first point, we don't really know what's going to happen or where this works. So my recommendation is to just draw another example of the triangle. This just helps me not only write in the answers, but just to kind of give a visual effect. And I'm a very visual person. Some of you might not be visual, and you might drawing the graph or drawing what the triangle will look like is not going to help you. This doesn't say this is what the triangle looks like, right? Because it could be an obtuse oblique angle. But anyways, by writing in this information, I can just plug in what I know. OK, that's 64 degrees. That's 16. And this one is 17. All right. But what I like about this is this just kind of helps me identify. So I need to use the law of sines, right? Well, which ratio should I use the law of sines on? For I know I'm going to have to do, and remember, to use the law of sines, you have to have a ratio of a side over its own angle. So I know I'm going to have a over sine of a. What should that equal? Well, what other piece of information do I have? B. So therefore, that should be b over sine of b. Does that make sense? Okay, so now I just plug in the information I have. So A is 16 over um, 16, 16 over sine of 64 equals uh, 17 over the sine of B. Now, like I said last class period, guys, I don't want to spend all day going over inverse operations. I'll say it out loud, and then I'll show you what it's going to be. Basically, to solve for sine of B, you'd have to get sine of B off the denominator. So multiply by sine of b on both sides. Therefore, you have sine of b times 16 over sine of 64 equals 17. Therefore, to undo that, I would multiply by the reciprocal. So therefore, you end up with the sine of b is equal to 17 times the sine of 64 all over 16. If you don't understand how I got to that, huh? Yep. Well, we're going to do all that Yeah, in just a second. We're going to, no, you cannot divide the 16 into the sine of 64. Because that's the function of, it's sine of 64. So 64 is attached to that sine. You can't, so you can't go into the function basically and do that. But I will show you what to do. Uh, you can simplify this. If you're having trouble with where I got to that, just let me know after I'm done with the problem. I'll be more than happy to explain that step by step. However, we do need to simplify this. So what we'll do is, again, and actually, Jade, if you just, just even to prove my point, what you'll do is you'll type in the sine of 64 times 17, and then divide by 16. And what I get is the sine of 0.95, or sine of b equals 0.95. Now, I'm just going to approximate it, whatever. Now, do you guys remember what we did over here? Remember we had sine of x is equal to 1 half, right? Yes? How did we find the sine of x? What did we do? We did, how do we find that? We did, well, use the inverse, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sine. So if I need to figure out what b is. So to figure out b, I need to use sine inverse. So I'm going to do sine inverse. I'm going to use the whole answer in my calculator. I'm not going to use my abbreviated version. So I'm going to do sine inverse of second answer. Or you can just, or you can just round this as much as, as best you can and then intuit it in. And what I get is 72.74. I don't have any decimals here, so I'm just going to round it to the hundredth. So b equals 72.74. Thank you. So if you guys go ahead and take a look at this, um, does everybody? Does everybody agree with me, understand how I got b equals 72.64? Well, I mean, I just did sine inverse of 0.95, and that got me 72. So if you use a calculator, you'll be able to see that. Now remember, though, is that the only angle where sine inverse or sine of b is equal to 0.95? No, that's the only angle that's in the first quadrant, correct? 
here, 72.74. But there's another angle over here, right? Which is going to be 180 minus that, which would be 127. Huh? 107? 127.26. 107? Oh, yeah, 107. You're right. Jeez. You're right. You're right. 107.26. Yes? Does everybody follow me? Oh, 06. You're right. <laughs> Good job. Jeez, oh, man. Got it. OK. So that's case 1b. And then we have b prime, which could be also another b, which is basically 180 minus 72.74, which equaled 107.26. OK? Now, here's where, here's where it gets tricky, and here's where a lot of your homework is. OK, here's where a lot of your homework comes in. Is it OK if B was our angle, 72.74? I'm sorry, B is over here. Could we have B, 72.74, be our angle? Because we, if we added these two up, would we still have room for C? Yes? OK, then good. So what we're going to do is we're going to say B is equal to 72. 0.14, and we're going to call this case 1. Then we check on B prime. B prime is 107.26. Can we have 107.26 also be the angle for B? Do these two add up and leave you room for C to be in the triangle? Yeah. So therefore, we create case 2, where we say B prime is equal to 107.26, and we call this case 2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do two different, we're going to do the problem basically twice, for case 1 and for case 2. So for case 1, I always think it's helpful just again, draw the triangle again. But in this case, you're drawing the triangle with 72.4, so we have A, B, and C. A is 64. Yes. 14 where? Oh, I don't know. 74, right? So this is 72.74. So if this is 64.74, can we figure out what angle C is? Yeah, just do 180 minus 64 minus 72.74. Correct? Does that make sense to find angle C? Just the sum of angles of a triangle, guys. So 180 minus 64 minus 72.74. And you get 43.26. So C equals 43.26. So I go and write that in there. So now, the only other thing we still need to figure out for case, for case number one is we need to figure out the side length C. So again, we need to use the law of sines. I prefer we use the law of sines with my A. So instead of writing A over sine of A equals C over sine of C, I'm just going to plug in the information, if that's OK with you. Save some time and some space. So therefore, I'll do A over the sine of A is equal to C over the sine of C. Therefore, C is equal to 16 times the sine of 43.26 divided by the sine of 64. Huh? Why is it I'm sorry, say that again? Why is uh, C, in the other ones you showed where all of them were <laughs> across like B, below B, C. Right, so I have A. A over sine of A. And then I need to solve for C. So I'm going to do C over sine of C. Yeah, oh. Where, where it is on the triangle. You're right. Wait. Oh, shoot. You're right. I should do B and B, B, right? Thank you. Sorry about that. You're very correct. I was misspeaking. Mis 
We need to solve for B. I, I wrote the diagram wrong. Sorry about that. We're solving for B. Thank you. Yep, but I wrote the wrong values. Huh? No, B equals O. Oh, crap. <laughs> no, we're OK. So I originally had it right. I was just, I just labeled everything wrong. that correct by all my uh, editors. Thank you very much. Sorry, just got a little bit confusing. But you just want to make sure you be very diligent and be very careful with this. Um, because like I said, yes, it can get kind of confusing with your law of signs. Anyways, by solving for this, um, this is what you would have. And then you just go ahead and simplify for case 1. Win 43.26. So I do 16 times the sine of 43.26. And then I divide that by the sine of 64. And I get 12.19. So I round that to the hundredth would be 12.20. And so if this is equal to 12.20, does that kind of work for this triangle, Jacob? Does that kind of fit side lengths? Yeah, that works, right? Now for case two, I'm now saying B is going to be a obtuse angle, right? A nice big triangle. So I'm actually going to draw my triangle to look a little bit differently. I'm going to say this is A, this is B, and this is C. So I'm now saying B is 107, 2, 6. A is 64 degrees. And then C, we don't know what C is. So that's 16. And B is 17. So now we need to figure out C. Well, can we figure out C by using our inequality theorem? Or not our inequality, but the sum of angles? So I, again, I have my two angles, 64 and 107.26. So I just do 180 minus 107.26 minus 64, and I get 8.74. So C equals 8.74. Does that kind of make sense for my angle to be that small? Yeah, yeah kind of fits, right? Also helpful to always make sure you're putting your degrees on your angles. Because if you don't put degrees on your angles, you start to think of them as lengths. So it can get really confusing really quickly. So always pay, put those degree symbols on there. All right, so now I know what C is. Now I just need to, again, use the law of sines to figure out C. So again, I'll, you want to use my ratio of A and now with my new angle for C. So therefore, um, I have, we already know what B. Oh, this should have been C. I said that five minutes ago. Well, I didn't hear you. Sorry. So anyways, I have um, 16 over the sine of 64 is equal to C over the sine of 8.74. Therefore, final answer for case two is going to be C is equal to 16 times the sine of 8.74 divided by the sine of 64. So again, we go back to our triangle. And we do 16 times the sine of 8.74. And then we divide that by the sine of 64. And we get 2.70. So C 
equals 2.770. No. Now, does that kind of make sense for how small this angle is for the side length to be that small compared to the other two? Sure. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, of course it does, right? So um, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's basically what you need to do. I just want you guys to remember that um, when you guys are